Hello, and welcome to Red in April Off-Grid. We've recently finished building our off-the-grid passive energy home, and now we're helping our son build his hyper adobe home. In this episode, we'll be installing the toilet, definitely a red letter date, and we will also be finishing up the cob and stucco on the walls and putting down the base layer of the earthen floor. The bathroom is the only part of the house with a concrete floor, which we poured ourselves, and I've already taken the time to grind the concrete around the toilet area so I have a nice flat surface. Next is installing the flange. I just set that down, glued it in place, and then used my hammer drill to drill into the concrete so that I could screw the flange down. We're installing a very base model toilet here. We had considered buying one that had a built-in bidet, but they're fairly costly, and so we decided to just install this base model and then add the bidet as an accessory. I already have the wax ring in place. Now I'm just trying to seat the toilet down on the wax ring, and then I'll bolt it in place. The bidet accessory for this toilet is very low cost and easy to install. Bidets are not very common in America yet, although they are becoming more popular. This one is really easy to install. It just connects into the water line, kind of in line with the existing system. So you don't have to have a separate water line or anything. And it comes with all the components you need to add it. So if you buy the kit, you have everything you need to install it on a traditional toilet. Bidets are becoming more popular because they work really well. They clean you off better than paper does. And they don't use a lot of paper, so it cuts down on your paper consumption. This kit is just a basic bidet kit. It doesn't come with extra features like the heated water or the air dry, um, but we found that just the cold water is fine and works great. If you do get a kit with the heated water feature, you'll need to have a plug-in nearby. Well, it ended up being a pretty easy install, so we're putting the water to it for the first time, letting the tank fill up, and then we'll try it out. Filling. Yes. <laughs> in the meantime, Kyle has been working on the cob on the inside. He's got quite a bit done in there. He's also been working on the stucco on the outside. He's managed to complete the top five feet of the second coat all the way around the structure. He wasn't able to go lower than that because of his knees. They were still healing up from those chemical burns. We all got together for another family work party to help Kyle finish up the lower portion of the stucco and also do some work on the inside cobbing. A little bit about our stucco mix here. We're using a three-part sand to one-part Portland cement mixture, and we're not adding anything else to it. That's just a base stucco mixture. And in retrospect, it probably would have been better to add some lime to it to make it more breathable. As it is, we figured that it would be okay since the inside walls, the inside of the walls, will not be sealed, and so vapor will still be able to move in and out of the walls through the interior. And we're not too worried about moisture here since it's a super dry climate. We also has really good eaves all the way around the house that'll keep most of the moisture off of the walls, so we're not too worried about it, but if it becomes a problem later, we can just redo it. It's not a real large structure and hasn't been real costly. Get a little video of all y'all's techniques. Yeah. <laughs> a little different techniques, but it all works. Kyle is doing all the mixing today, and we're keeping him quite busy doing that. It works for him because his knees are still bothering him, still can't get down on his knees to work. And so with one person mixing and three people applying, it's going really quickly. We were able to complete the second coat before lunch. So that finishes up the stucco work on the outside of the home. It's very exciting. The only additional step he'll be doing is to spray on a clear masonry sealant. But he'll have to wait until the stucco has completely cured. After lunch, we move to the inside to start working on the cob walls. We've already had one work party to work on the cob, and Kyle has done some more since then, so now we're just finishing up the final part of the first layer. 
We've put this coat on pretty rough because we had originally planned on putting a second coat over the top, kind of a fine finish layer, but Kyle's not real picky and he likes the look of it just the way it is. And so we've decided not to put on a second coat. We're just gonna leave it at the first coat here. And so we're gonna finish it up and then go back and touch up the areas that need a little more work. Applying the cob has really been a pleasant experience. It's something that we've all enjoyed and it doesn't require a real high skill level. It kind of comes intuitively and so it's a great project for a work party. As we were finishing up, Kyle decided to go ahead and mix up a batch of lime whitewash and test it out on the walls. We've never used this before and so we were curious, you know, how it would behave, what it would look like when it goes on. And this is an interesting substance. It, it, you mix it up to about the consistency of milk. And so it's kind of watery. And when you apply it, it smooths out the surface of the cob. So it's, that's kind of nice. It creates a smoother surface, especially since we only did one layer and the coat that we did was a little on the rough side. So this helped out with that. It should also really help to brighten up the space. You can put on multiple coats until you get the color that you want or the level of brightness that you want in that white and it also helps seal the wall. Well, it was a great work day. We all had a lot of fun and it's so nice to have the cob and the stucco complete. Well, we're ready to move on to the next phase of the project, which is the earthen floors. In order to create the earth for the earthen floors, we'll be mixing sand with our soil and a little bit of Portland cement. And so now we're on our way to harvest some sand off of the property. During the monsoon season, we have water that runs into our property and into a collection pond, and that water brings in sediment and sand, and the sand drops out along the way before it gets to our pond, and so we find the locations where that sand has dropped out, and we can go just scoop it up and load it into the back of our trailer, which is what we're doing here. We've already harvested a lot of the sand out of this area for the cob walls, but we're hoping that we have enough here to do the floors. Next up, we cleared out the area so that we could start on the floor. You can also see the whitewash work that Kyle's been doing in his spare time. We spent some time getting the floor as level as possible and then started putting down the layers. First the plastic and then the foam board. I'm putting down the first batch here. You can see how much a batch covers, about a two by two foot square. This is the material that we used on the cob walls. Kyle already had the dry materials loaded in the mixer from when he was doing the cob walls. This isn't what we'll use on the rest of the floor. We'll be adding some Portland cement to it, but it is what would be a traditional mixture for a base layer of an earthen floor. And we're curious to see how it contrasts between the mix that we'll be using going forward and the traditional mix. For the base layer of this floor, we'll be using the same mixture that we used on our floor, which is a five gallon bucket of soil, a five gallon bucket of sand, and one gallon of Portland cement. For this floor, we are adding more moisture to the mixture than we did on our floor. For our floor, we were going for a rammed earth type of concept. And so we got a moderate amount of moisture in the soil to where it was not muddy, but very packable. And then we actually packed it in with a tamper. We learned a lot from doing the floor in our house. One thing we noticed was when we first started doing it in our house, we weren't getting enough moisture and it wasn't setting up very hard and we had to remove it and put more moisture in the mix. And once we started doing that, we got a better product, but we noticed that on some batches, we got too much moisture in or more than we were planning, and it got uh, almost a muddy consistency, and those batches dried really hard. And so we've decided to do this whole floor that way, add enough moisture to where it gets to a, a barely muddy consistency, and we expect that it'll set up really hard.
And sure enough, we've come back the next day and it is very hard. You can definitely walk on it. It almost feels like cured cement. It's extremely hard. When it's really muddy, when it goes down, it also gives a really smooth coat since you're troweling it smooth. And so I needed to add some texture some, so that the next layer will grip. So I'm doing that with my fingers. And here you can see where our granddaughter got loose and added some texture of her own. So far we've completed about two two-hour sessions and we're working on the third. The process is pretty simple. I just dump it out. I like to do roughly square sections. I use my hands to get it just slightly above the height that I want it to finish at. And then I take the trowel and smooth it down from there. This coat is three to three and a half inches thick and the top coat will be one half to one inch thick. Well, we've used up the dirt pile that we had easy access to. When we were leveling out the floor on the inside, we dumped all the dirt, you know, close to the door. And we've used all that up, so now we need to move the sifter a little farther away to another dirt pile so we can start getting dirt from there. We've also brought some cement bags that we had left over from our build, four 100-pound bags, and we'll be using those here. They've been sitting around for a while and they're starting to get a little chunky, so we wouldn't want to use them on anything critical, but they should work fine for this earthen floor. Kyle has been outside full time here, mixing up the batches. It's some good hard physical labor, carrying full buckets of sand and soil. And I've been on the inside, spreading and smoothing. I also come out and give Kyle a hand sifting soil when I have time. There's a lot of good, honest labor involved in this type of construction, and it's a lot of fun to be able to gather the materials you need from the land. We've harvested the sand from the land, and now we're sifting the soil from Kyle's own property, and we're putting that together with a little bit of Portland cement to make the floor, and it's just a really cool process. And the end product is a really great floor that's very natural, feels great to walk on, and is extremely affordable. Most of the materials are free for the taking. In the meantime, April's doing some patch up work around the portholes. Some of the bags were sagging over the tube, and so she cut the bags open, moved them back, and now she's patching that up with cob. There's different ways that you can get a floor like this level. You can use a board with a level on it and use that to check your level and make adjustments as you go. But what I found that works really well for me is just to do it by eye. We spent a good deal of time on the surface preparation before we put down the base layers of the plastic and foam and got that as level as possible. So now I'm just using my eye to try to keep it the same thickness as I go across the floor. And every once in a while I'll stand back and take a look at the floor overall and make sure I'm not getting off. And that's what worked really well for me. And here I am using a rake to put some texture in it so the next coat will grip. I had been using my fingers to do it, but I forgot. And so I decided to use a rake just because I could reach with it, but I didn't really like the results I got. It tore up the surface too much. And so going forward, I started trying to remember to do it with my fingers before I moved along to the next batch. And now it's the next day and we're prepping the last section, which will take us up to the concrete.
Getting the proper moisture level isn't too critical. What we watch for is when it starts to ball up and kind of start thunking and flopping around in the burrow, we know it's about right. And here you can see my fancy ramp set up. I have one that gets me down to the level of the interior floor, and then I put boards along on top of the foam so that the wheel of the wheelbarrow doesn't dig into the foam and damage it. And we're just using some pieces of scrap OSB to make the path. While well, we've been working on the floor, April has been working on cobbing the transition between the wall and the ceiling. There's a space there that Kyle and I were fine just leaving, but April really thought that it would look much nicer if there was a little more work done to that area. So she's adding some cob there and smoothing that transition, and it really looks a lot better. She's sloping from the wall up to the ceiling and filling in better around the straps. It gives it a much more finished look. As you can see, the lime whitewash is looking good here. We will be putting on some additional coats and really brighten that up. And we'll have some time anyway while we're waiting for the base floor coat to dry. We plan to finish up all the whitewash before we do the top coat of the earthen floor so that we don't get any on the top layer. So heavy. We've been dumping the older cement that we're using into this barrel so that we could use the tamper to break up the chunks before we actually use it in the mix. There's a lot of different ways that you could mix materials like this. We've chosen to measure it into five gallon buckets and then dump the five gallon buckets in. Um, you know, you could do it with a shovel and just do it by the shovel full, but we like doing the five gallon buckets because we get consistent results with that consistent measurement. The five gallon buckets are pretty heavy, but they're manageable. Well, we are getting close. I'm working on the last section, kind of backing my way towards the door, and April is making good progress along the top of the walls. It's been great to have someone who cares about the details go around and do the finishing touch-up work on the walls. We've gone about as far as we can before we have to remove the ramp in order to finish the base layer for the last section. For this entire floor, we've been putting down a piece of one-inch foam board to create a thermal break between the earth and the floor. This will allow the earthen floor and the concrete floor to act as thermal mass and help regulate temperature inside the home. In the summertime in this area, we have nice cool night air that we can bring in through the use of a cooler or window fan to cool things down at night, so summertime temperatures aren't a real big problem. And this type of floor will help out in the wintertime when our biggest problem is retaining heat inside the home and keeping the house warm. Without the foam layer in the floor, the heat just sinks into the floor indefinitely. The earth is this well that just keeps soaking the heat out of your home. And so creating that thermal barrier will allow the earthen floors to soak up and retain heat during the day and then release it at night, thereby helping maintain an even warm temperature at night in the winter. Most of the soil that we've been using for the floor has come from this area over by the septic, and it's the spoils or the dirt that was left over from the digging that was done around the septic area. So it's nice and loose and easy to use. It has a lot of rocks in it, which is unusual for this area, but we're sifting it out and it's an easy source of soil for the floor. The house is looking really different, really finished with the stucco completed, and now we're almost finished with the base layer on the floor. This floor is a lot of labor, but it really hasn't taken that long. It's taken us about four days, working about four hours a day. We split that up each day into two two-hour sessions. But wow, it is a really solid floor. When you walk on it, it feels like concrete. It really sets up hard and makes a really solid base layer. So far, we haven't seen any cracking at all in this floor. It looks amazingly stable. We may eventually get some minor cracking, but we don't expect anything too serious. And it looks like it's going to be a great stable subfloor and a great base for the next layer. The top coat will be an entirely different mix and goes on differently, so stay tuned. We'll be showing you that next week. We'll also be finishing up the whitewash and installing the front door. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoy our content, be sure to give us a thumbs up and join us again next time. <laughs>